Well, 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 what is up, everybody? What is up? Welcome to the eighth episode of the Chord Progression Podcast, a My Song of the Day Rock 2000 to Today podcast. As you guys know, or if you don't know, I don't know, my name's Kevin. If you follow any of our stuff, you'll see me from the YouTube videos, the IGTV videos, the live streams, any kind of videos we post out there, anything, even the ads that we put on Facebook and Instagram, you'll see me on all that shit. So you guys can easily see who I am. And I want to say welcome to the Core Progression Podcast where we just talk a shit ton of stuff about, well, rock music, specifically from the years 2000 to today. However, don't get me wrong, I do love a lot of different types of rock music, so I do get into some of that as well. Like one time, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I got into the the movie The Dirt by that they all made about uh, on Netflix about Molly Crew. So I got into that as well. But today we're sticking with more rock music and metal music from the years 2000 to today. So before we get started on everything that's gone on in the past week since I did my uh, emergency podcast, the last special episode from last Wednesday, where I went through the whole entire Summerfest lineup in Milwaukee and just kind of, well, ran through it and eviscerated it. I mean, I'll get into more stuff later, but not that. I went to that last week. But I got to do my, what I call the shameless plug section of the show. So shameless plugs. If this is your first time listening, I want to give you a huge welcome. If this is your second time or after that listening, or if you're a repeat listener, I want to say again, especially thank you for coming back and listening to this stuff. It means the world to me, the world to me, because this is really what I want to do. This is, I want to create this entire community based around rock music and not one that's just, oh, we have to support every single band there is. And if, you know, they make a bad record, we still have to say, you know, they're still good. I, I mean, if you're a band, you're a great band, you make a bad record. Will I say you're a great band? Yes. Will I tell you you made a bad record? Hell yeah. Will, I, will the fans of this page tell you you made a bad record? Yeah, they have. And I'm glad about that because it's we're just basically being completely upfront and honest and we're not holding anything back and we're not sugarcoating anything, which I like because, you know, sometimes people need that tough love. So if you're not following us on our Facebook page, Instagram page or our Instagram page, I've got links in the show notes because, I mean, we put out killer content there all the time. Instagram specifically, because that's where we do our IGTV videos, we do the live streams, we put a lot of stuff out in there. Twitter's more of the talking to you guys about it, and I'll get into that in a moment. Facebook is kind of the driving, or not necessarily the driving force, but kind of the avenue where we get a lot of the stuff off of. So you're going to want to go check that out as well. Check out our YouTube channel as well, My Song Day Rock 2000 today. We do stuff like album reviews, band reviews. Versus putting two bands together, answering questions. The podcast is also on our YouTube page as well, so go check it out. Subscribe, all that jazz. Most importantly, I do have an Amazon Alexa skill for this. That was kind of the thing that drove all of this to start because I couldn't stand the Amazon music one where it's, oh, you have to pay for a song of the day stuff. I'm like, okay. So when I finally got found a couple people that had it, I asked them, like, so what's going on with song of the day? You know, it's like, what's the feature? They said, you got to pay for it. And they give you the bands you like, but they always give you the same exact songs. They're not going to give you anything unique. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. I can do that for my favorite kind of music. I can give you guys different stuff all the time on my own personal recommendation. So that's kind of where I start out with this. And I'm glad I've done it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. So if you can please activate that skill, if you have an Amazon Alexa and start out your day or do it in the middle of the day, end of the day, whenever you want to do it, just say, hey, Alexa, play my song of the day, and boom, get like a quick intro from yours truly, and then, yeah, we're going into it. So, hopefully, I hope you guys uh, enable the skill. I've got links in the description below so you can quickly enable it on your smartphone. Now, let's just get into the real meat and potatoes of this shit because, well... I have some new music to talk about. Specifically, the album that came out on Friday was Andy Black's The Ghost of Ohio. For those of you who may be new to this or don't know what's going on, uh, Andy Black is the alter ego of Andy Beersack, who is the lead singer of Black Veil Brides. Andy Black is his solo project and his solo career. And I ended up taking a listen to the whole album what the day it came out like four or five times just because I wanted to get a real feel of everything that was going on and understand what was all about this album. But the night beforehand, I did go on Twitter and was, you know, look, gauging what the audience was going to say about it, gauging what the world was saying about it online. And I saw nothing but just 
positive, glowing reviews from people. And I'm like, okay, that does concern me a little bit. Mostly because, you know, if you're going to give these positive, glowing reviews from everybody, I'm thinking it's either one of two ways. It's either going to be A, really fucking good. And I'm going to end up agreeing with you. Or it's going to be the fans that are really 100% behind you and just that's everything it is are going to love whatever you do and they're going to, you know, not care about your faults. So I was a little worried going into it. And on Friday, April 12th, I started listening to the album. Went through once, twice, three times, four times. Started talking about it on Twitter. I ended up having a, li- a quick little tidbit with uh, Chris Beersack about the whole entire album. And now it's time for me to talk about it. One of the fans of the of the show and of the channel and everything, Evie, she was on episode two, and she's a big Black Veil Brides fan. She would always tell me that Andy Beersack was her husband. She told me she did not like this album at all. She did not really care for the Ghost of Ohio, which, again, threw me off because it's like, huh, I'm surprised that she's the one that's actually saying that. But then again, let's see what goes from there. And I took a full look at it, and... I'm not going to give you my full rating on it, a scale from 0 to 10. 0 being today's Maroon 5, because, well, that's just horrible. And 10 being, you know, The Suffer and the Witness by Rise Against, because I think that's one of the greatest albums of all time, because I love that shit. Woo! If you want to see my full review on it, Wednesday, I've got the whole entire review on YouTube, but I'll give you a little tidbit of what I thought of it. Um, Overall... There are a lot. There are parts of the album that I did like, and there are parts of the album that, of course, I really disliked. But let's start off with the parts that I loved first off. And the first thing I loved about this album was the concept that was put behind it, and just the whole entire meaning behind the Ghost of Ohio album. Every single song really forces you, as the listener, to reflect. And it's not just reflect on you know what has happened in the past, but what's happened in your past specifically. It's a very much a Take a look, take a listen, and think about what you have done in life and where it has led you today and what you're going to do moving forward. There is a lot of that. Every single song really takes a look at that. There are some songs that really go into, you know, what the decisions that you've made now, how how's it affect how has it affected where you're at? And just realizing that and really being able to take a look at that, figuring out, you know, maybe how the problems you had at home when you were a kid, you know, how has that affected you? Also, there's some songs that evoke emotion about, you know, thinking about the, for your first love or the one that got away, because there is one song that the right when I, right when I heard it, that was the first thing I thought of. I was like, shit, this is where it's going. There's a couple other songs too, where it's, you know, thinking about how, where you've gotten now and the people that were with you five years ago, how you've gotten away from those people, and maybe it's for the good, maybe it's for the bad. But basically, what this whole entire album does is it forces you to think about your life. And that's something that I really liked about this album because it really you, it really dug deep into that, and it really went hard into it. Now, at the same time, that's one thing I disliked about this album, and it's not that, and I, I love the concept, don't get me wrong, but the thing I dislike about this album is because the concept is very niche, and it screws up likability, or not necessarily likability, but uh, repeat listening, and let me explain myself, because don't get me wrong, I love the concept, but when it comes to that kind of a concept, that's not something I'm going to want to listen to all the time, especially if it's going to make me think and feel about all these things that happened in my past and make me reflect like crazy because you don't always want to reflect on everything. That might get up, you know, you might find some things out about yourself for sure, but if you're constantly reflecting all the time, you're not living in the moment. You're not enjoying what's been going on recently with your life, what's going on in the present. You're constantly living in a spot where you can't do anything about it because it has already happened so i just cannot listen to this album a whole lot especially i thought four times through was really interesting but then again that was all because me trying to listen to it four times through 
to do my review on this. I, I had to do it. I had to, I had to figure like, like listen to it once just so I could get the feel of how the album was going to go. Listen to it again to make sure that's how I actually felt. Listen to it a third time to understand the instrumentation and how everything works. And a fourth time to understand how the vocals, how the words, the lyrics and the message behind each song really hits. So I, I wasn't going to miss out on anything here. But I don't want to reflect all the time. I just don't. That just is not something that, you know, really sticks out in my mind. I don't want to constantly be reflecting. There, there are some songs that I would want to listen to more th than others. But if I'm in that, you know, I really need time to just sit down and think about what I've done in life. Yeah, this is the album for it. But if I'm in the happiest mood ever, if I'm feeling great, if I'm like, yeah, this is the greatest thing I've ever done you know, and I'm just happy, I'm not going to listen to this because it's going to change my emotion. It's going to change how I feel. And that's just not something I want. I want to do at that moment when I want to reflect. Yeah, this is the album. A couple other things I liked about this album was the style of each song because of how it worked in harmony with the message that was being portrayed. Basically what I'm saying is the style of song that was chosen for each one and maybe some of the influences behind it too. I thought they worked well with the emotion that they were trying to pick up. Uh, I'm going to use the promise as an example, because that was probably my favorite song on the record. It was their third single. It was the last single to come out before the release of the ghost of Ohio. And my biggest thing with that one was it made me think about, you know, back to high school, even just because yeah, I'm 24 years old right now. So I was thinking back, you know, six years ago, about 17, eight or 17, 18 years old, senior in high school. And the biggest reason why I was thinking about that was because thinking about, you know, all the promises you made, all the, all the people you used to hang out with and thinking about where your life has gone since and where those people have ended up in your life. And a lot of those people, I, I still talk to some of those people, but I can, I looked and I thought, you know, could I have imagined where I was back when I was 18 to be where I'm at 24, given the people I was hanging out with. And if I was still going to be hanging out with them, I mean, I could never imagine this because there are some people, of course, there are some people I still hang out that I hung out with when I was 18. There's also a good amount of people that I don't see on a monthly basis or like even, you know, sometimes a yearly basis now that I used to hang out with every single weekend or four, three or four times a week. It just doesn't happen like that anymore. And it really made me think about that. But the biggest thing I had with this song and why I liked it was because of the influences it took and the biggest influence i could tell was this song sounded like it was an influence song from bruce springsteen yeah the boss because i kept thinking when i first heard it with the piano just the style it was how the song flowed even the inclusion of the saxophone i thought this was a song that was definitely inspired by born to run and i really did enjoy it there are a bunch of other songs in there too that really take this kind of emotion and just they they take some experimentation with different song styles from specific artists or from different genres and really kind of set them forward and it's something that you know it, it, it works it really picks up on that emotion it depends on what it works with and it's going to complement the message behind the song very well, or the message is going to complement the style of how the song was constructed rather well. So don't get me wrong on that. But let's see. I got to look at some of that influence, some, some of that like uh, influence on certain songs, specifically, specifically the influence I could find from bands of a more, popular nature within pop culture that I think, you know, sometimes maybe had sold out at times, even like imagine dragons or Coldplay. I thought those songs were rather weak. So I'm just like, Oh man, uh, not necessarily the happiest about that because those are the ones that, you know, they, I thought they did invoke the emotion that you really needed to get, especially when a reflective mode, but it just wasn't as strong as some of those. And it wasn't as strong as, Ones that, you know, I was talking about earlier with The Promise and uh, Bruce Springsteen. What was the other one that really did a good job with that? Because I, I know I wrote it down. I just want to take a look. The Wind and Spark. That was another one that did that very well. Because it reminded me of a Brian Adams song. I think Summer of 69. So there are songs where it really worked like that. But then there are some like Heroes We Are that just did not work out as well. Because again, more pop centric. It just didn't sound like it worked out as well as it easily could have. Um, other things I liked and disliked about this album is it depended upon the song. It depended upon how Andy's uh, voice was within the song, because there are sometimes 
he played with how his voice was working and how he, especially range wise. Sometimes it was softer, sometimes it was louder. His clean vocals on some songs were very clean and crisp and just worked out incredibly. There are some times where they just kind of just were soft and, you know, experimental. And those worked too. There were times where they just didn't fit though. So his range was shown off well at times and his range was shown off poorly at times. And it just thought, I just thought, you know, not necessarily sure how that's going to work. So again, there are a good amount of things I did like about this album. There are a good amount of things that I really didn't care for much in this album. But again, if you know, if if it happens to the point where I end up getting to talk to Andy and Bjusek about this or getting another Twitter conversation with Chris about this, the thing is, is this is my opinion on the album. I know a lot of people love it, and I get it. I get it. This is just wasn't an album that I really could fully get behind. I do think it was better than some of the albums that I've heard this year, but I'm not sure where it's going to end up, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I From what I've heard from people as well, it was not as good as his Andy Black first release with the Shadow Side. That they, plus, some people didn't think it was as good as that. Um my biggest problem with doing this review for the Ghost of Ohio was I really wanted to, you know, think about this as Andy Beersack Black Veil Brides because that's the sound I really like a lot more and see and listen to a lot more than something like this. But I had to put that to the side, so I hope that, you know, kind of bias-ish doesn't come into play in the review. And I don't think it did. I'm, I'm giving you my honest opinion, and again, I, I know there are a lot of people that don't like Andy Beersack or Black Veil Brides at all. I know there's a lot of people that love him. It's a very polarizing topic, especially within rock music, and I've seen that on our channels. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy it, because then you're, because people aren't you know sugarcoating it. If you really like the album, defend why you really like the album. If you really don't like the album, defend the reason behind it. You can see me, up, or you can listen to me on here. I am not defending the album like a crazy like a crazy man because i didn't think it was as good as a lot of people thought it was especially on twitter i didn't think it was as bad as a lot of people thought it was either i thought it was you know i thought it ranged in the middle because again it had good points it had bad points it's just or strong points and weak points but that's where i go and that's where i'll digress with that couple let's see let's see what else is going on here up oh, i'm getting a freaking phone call from Oh, God, it's another one of those goddamn numbers. Don't you hate when you get those phone calls? I'm doing a podcast here, and I'm getting a phone call from another just random-ass number just trying to probably be a robocall saying, this is your local cops. There is a warrant out for the arrest of, and then they just don't even say a name. It's like, well, what the hell? It's like, call us back immediately to rectify this. And then you try and talk to them and it's still recording. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to do that shit. So why the hell are people trying to call me, especially a goddamn robocall, when I'm shooting a goddamn podcast? Don't they know this shit? I'm going to wind up whacking them. I mean, one thing I always wanted to do was when a robocall calls, I wanted to see if I could get for that. I've always tried to end up getting a representative if I ever pick up the phone I have the time. Sometimes I have the time, sometimes I don't. But if I'm ever actually able to get a representative on the line, I'm just like, come on. Come on. And then I just end up talking to him and I just have some fun with it. There was one time I forgot. It was like a might have been a credit card thing. I was in a bad mood. And of course, they call. It's like, if you'd like to speak to a representative. And it was a credit card that they said it was in. They said it was an account that it was in my name. Yeah, I never applied for anything like that. I've never had any kind of business dealings with it. And no, my identity didn't get stolen. I knew it was a scam right away based upon the number that it was on. So I'm like, okay, let's have some fucking fun with this. Let's get to that representative. And the representative was like, hello, my name is blank. How are you today? And it's like, what was that? Excuse me? I can't hear. The one thing I never, ever did in that inter- in that time was say yes. That's one thing you never want to do is say the word yes. Because then, of course, you know, they can record the co- phone conversation. They can doctor it and then make it sound like you actually agreed to whatever they were asking. So never, ever say the word yes to a telemarketer or anything like that unless you're absolutely entirely sure so that's kind of where i went with that i never i didn't say yes like what are you talking about there's sometimes i said hey what 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 was that shunny like i just was having fun with them my whole entire goal was to get them to swear at me instead of having me be go like oh what the fuck it's like sir we don't take that kind of language then hang up on me like i don't i want to do the absolute opposite i want to get them to hang up on me 
I've never actually achieved that before, and I'm kind of mad about it because I've always wanted to achieve something like that, to get a telemarketer so pissed off that they end up yelling at me. But then again, that's if I actually have the time. I don't normally have the time to do this stuff, but say I want to kill, you know, 20 minutes, I'm waiting for something, and all of a sudden a telemarketer rings, like I'm waiting, you know, go on a date or something, or waiting to, you know, go hang out with my friends, just waiting for dinner to be done. Hell yeah, I'll have some fun with that. It's a good stress reliever. It can actually be kind of fun too, but again, you got to be careful. So, but I have some fun with that stuff. I should have picked it up and just, okay, full disclosure, next time on the podcast, because I do have the audio connected to my uh, soundboard. That's how whenever you hear uh, when Evie was on episode two or when Jacob was on on episode five, when I talk to him, yeah, my phone is connected to the soundboard so you can hear it. And I thought it was fun. So maybe next time you guys got to let me know on social media. If you are just connect with us, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, just comment on anything saying, Holy shit. I'd love to hear that. Let's go. Yeah. So if I get another telemarketer call and you guys want to hear, I'll put them on and (laughs) we'll see what happens. Cause they say this call is recorded for quality purposes. I'll say, well, this call is recorded for comedy purposes, bitch. Alrighty, well, enough with uh, me going off on freaking telemarketers. There's been some stuff in, you know, I'll put it this way. I don't want to be the hacky guy that says, oh, stuff in the news happened, and I'm going to give you my take on it. But there is some always some funny shit that happens in rock music, and I found some funny shit that happened, and I got to start out with the band Ice Nine Kills. So for those of you who maybe saw it or didn't see it, I got to pull it up. Ice Nine Kills is current is going to be going on a little bit of a tour with Falling in Reverse. And they're going to a couple of places, mostly like House of Blues. Uh, I think it was House of Blues, right? Yeah, they're mostly going to House of Blues places, just kind of going out, having a good time, playing their music. Because uh, I did in the special podcast last Wednesday, uh, the review of Drugs by Falling in Reverse, which I actually did enjoy the song. If you want to listen to the full kind of take on that, go there. But they're supposed to be with Ice Nine Kills. There was a House of Blues that would not let them perform at their venue. And I'm like, oh shit, well, who was it? It was the House of Blues at Disney Springs in, I'm not sure if it's Kissimmee or Orlando, Florida. And at first, that made me laugh for a couple of reasons. One, why the hell is there a House of Blues in Disney Springs? But I have seen the House of Blues in Disney Springs. When I let, I think it was in February. I was uh, for my dad's 60th birthday. Him and I went to Florida because we went to Daytona. His 60th birthday was on the Daytona 500, and yeah, we were going to go to the race, and we did. That's why if you ever see some of the videos I do, you know, you'll see a hat with a number four on it. No, that's not Brett Favre. That's a Kevin Harvick hat because yeah, I actually do watch NASCAR. I enjoy it. It's something I do with my dad. So if you guys don't like it, shut up. But we were at Disney Springs with a a couple of members of family that we didn't know were down there. And I use as my Disney story because we got drunk at Disney. And it was a blast. If you ever have a chance, actually, you know, the chance. And if, you know, you come and win the lottery, go and drink at Disney and just have a good time. It is fun as hell. But I completely forgot there was a House of Blues at Disney Springs. And they banned Ice Nine Kills from actually performing there. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. What? Okay, so so what happened? So, <laughs> Ice Nine Kills ended up being banned from playing at the Disney Springs House of Blues. Which, or it's in Lake Buena Vista. Lake Buena Vista! And t- basically due to their violent imagery... Basically, they're like, oh, my God, we don't like that style here at Disney, even though they, you know, they're violent imagery. Are you kidding me? Take a look at everything that's been done since they bought Marvel. I mean, those movies are violent as all hell. And now they've bought 21st or 20th Century Fox and all their properties, which includes Deadpool. They're not touching Deadpool. So Disney's going to have rated R Deadpool. Of course, that makes me happy. I fucking love Deadpool. Find him hilarious. But yeah, they're supposed to be playing with Falling in Reverse on April 26th, so that's two Saturdays from now? So I thought, okay, that's actually kind of interesting. So what's Ice Nine Kills going to do? Well, they said 
This is their tweet statement. Disney House of Blues in Orlando banned us from performing because of our violent imagery. It's a shame because I know I've seen Donald Duck at the show before. He's an Ice Nine Kills fan. The band responded. And I just thought that's great. Like, that's a great response. But then they went even further and they created a whole entire line of merch around it. And I'm like, oh, wow. So it's all Disney-inspired merch with... uh, Basically, featuring Disney characters dressed up as horror icons, including Pennywise, Freddy Krueger, and a lot more. And I tried getting my hands on some of it, but they had it in limited edition because of this. And I got to tell you, it sold out fast. Like, it just went. And I just thought this was freaking perfect because who looks dumb in this situation? Is it Disney or is it Ice Nine Kills? I got to say, Ice Nine Kills came out on top on this one because... Yeah, they got banned from Disney. They turned getting banned from Disney because of who they are into a positive by A, doubling down on who they were and making a shit ton of money off of it by with limited merch. Now, I want to see him come out with more of that stuff because it was freaking great. And I, I, I want to get my hands on some of it. I'm not that big of an Ice Nine Kills fan, but this kind of, for, for people that really like rock music or metal music that aren't that big in a nice Ice Nine Kills, this is something that's going to get us the fans that really aren't into them to take a look at them and get more in depth because of a stunt like this or, you know, responding to a stunt like this. I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's one thing I thought, yeah, this is definitely something that Ice Nine Kills won. I mean, they won the freaking day. I love it. Woo! Speaking of crazy merch, I mean, I saw this also. This is a freaking New York Times article. It was about everyone's favorite goth and emo store back in 2006. Do you know what I'm talking about? Every kid went here at least once in their mall rat days. They're, you know, wandering around the mall and just having a good time. And, of course, you had to go in here for some crazy shit. No, it's not Spencer's. It's Hot Topic. So, the New York Times had a whole entire expose on Hot Topic not about what it not about you know what hot topic was because people know what hot topic is it's been around for a long time well 30 years at this point i think was the when the first store came out cuz it was kind of inspired by the nightmare on elm street for some i forgot who the guys were but that, that it was in the whole freaking article i can put the article in the show notes for you so you guys can actually read the whole entire thing but Hot Topic went from that store where people were freaking afraid to go into it's like oh only you only go in there if you're goth or emo or something like that to now, it's probably a store that is, thri- from what I read and what I've seen, it's a store that's freaking thriving, especially in shopping malls when, yeah, I'm an econ guy too. So, yeah, that's really weird. A rock music and metal music aficionado also loves the economics. Yeah, get over it. So I really wanted to read about this. I'm like, okay, I'm curious. I am for sure curious about how this is going to work. And they somehow transformed their store to cater to pop culture without losing their own identity and they freaking hacked it if if you if you guys think about it they freaking hacked it and i loved it i mean not hack it by like they hacked the culture they busted through and made it insane so i was looking through basically what they were doing i mean we all remember what it was like back in shit 2006 2007 2008 as it was dark it was very dimly lit it was all everything was all red and black around it very emo very goth like always you get the you can always see the crazy piercings that they were selling uh the always the band t-shirts the wall the wall that had all the t-shirts up on you could always see uh the crazy hair hair dye hairspray you could see all of that shit and the people that work there really took a part in that as well in creating that image so especially when, you know, bands, when that when that uh, whole entire emo and goth stage was going on, again, 2005, 2006, thinks, think uh, 30 Seconds of Mars or the, the album of Beautiful Eye. Think My Chemical Goddamn Romance. Think uh, Escape the Fate when Ronnie Radke was their lead singer. Uh, AFI, you know, 2006 as well. I'm just throwing out names. I know I'm missing a shit ton probably that you guys would be like, hey, you're missing this. Hey, you're missing this band. Well, yeah, I can't think of them off the top of my head right now, so screw you. So, what? So basically, it's okay. Now that that style is basically, you know, not nowhere anywhere near popular and non-existent, what have they done 
to make them thrive again. And I took a look at the article and I thought about it. I thought, my God, they really did it well. Basically what they did was they didn't lose their self image. They didn't lose what got, I'm not saying they lose what got there and that's sticking to their laurels, but they are still sticking to who they are as a, as a store basically. So is the wall of t-shirts still going to be there? Yeah. The wall of t-shirts is still there and I love it is, are you, can you still buy vinyl records there from those kinds of bands? Those alternative rock, alt alt rock, hard rock, metal bands, emo bands. Yeah. That's where I actually got my first vinyl and it was the best album I ever got on vinyl. Yeah. It was the suffer and the witness by rise against. Of course, who could have seen that one coming folks? Huh? I mean, I mean, could you have seen that one coming? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know, but now they aren't, now they're kind of just going with some different bands on the wall too. And one of the big, one of the big uh, artists actually that they're kind of starting to really focus in on selling their merch is Billie Eilish, which I totally understand, especially after people are like, Oh, you got a listener. You got a listener. And I'd never heard of her before like three weeks ago. And now she's headlining Summerfest on one night. I'm like, what the shit? Went over that like a week ago and or two weeks ago actually. Don't really care for her music on my taste, but I do understand why a lot of people like it. I it's 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 rather simple to figure out. But not only that, but they're really taking a big stand in with what else can they what else can they do? They're really getting into the culture of you know basically what. The kids from that, I remember back us, like us, 2006, 2007, that listened to that music. Where are those kids? What's the version of what? Not where are those kids now, but if those kids were around, what, what, what group are they? And I think they really went hammered, hitting home on the group because they're, I mean, they're, they got brought, their stores are all bright now. I mean, they're still, they still kind of look, you know, they, they, I wouldn't say they look dark and dingy. They look more industrial. We'll put it that way. But taking a look at some of the merch selling, yeah, they're still selling all like the crazy stuff. Uh, a lot of the multicolored stuff. Let's see any other pictures. One thing I see on here is when it comes to they're selling a lot of stuff that like those uh shit. Let me take a look. I gotta see what these are. What the hell? Those little uh, they're selling a lot of those like pop character doll things i i know a lot of people like got them i just don't care for them but they're selling a lot of those and those are hot right now so yeah i totally get they're selling a lot of stuff that's very meme driven on the internet especially on social media like twitter instagram all over the place so they're just smart as shit let's put it that way hot topic is smart as shit if you haven't been a hot topic maybe go give it a shot i haven't been in one in years am i gonna go give it a shot yeah, probably not because I haven't. The last time I was at the mall, I bought a new freaking computer that cost me thirty five hundred bucks. And what what else did I? I mean, what was the last time I was there before that? Shit, I don't know. Two years ago, to get my old laptop fixed. <laughs> oh no no no! The last time I was at the mall before I got my new computer was I went to I went with my little cousin because we were gonna get a picture taken with Santa of us being completely and utterly ridiculous, and. Uh, give it to my our, my aunt, who is our both our godmothers, because yes, our our families are Catholic. To uh, just as just as a as a present, just as because she always gets you know the she always gets good stuff, but we want to give her something that was truly special. So in the picture of this one, you see Santa sitting down there. There's me in a pair of soccer sh- or the three quarter shorts for that. I mean, you see soccer players with them all the time uh a miller light sweatshirt and my minnesota viking santa hat granted i live in milwaukee wisconsin people don't like the vikings around here then there's my little cousin in a minnesota golden gopher shirt that i fucking b- bought him for christmas when he was like yes and we were trying to figure out you know what the hell we wanted to do and we got we got to santa my brother was supposed to be there with us but he couldn't make it for that one because we did it the day before christmas eve my brother couldn't get into right before about to you know have christmas eve dinner with the with the family so i was like you know Let's make this a godson thing, I guess. And it worked. Not going to lie, it worked. We were trying to figure out what the hell to do because you looked around, you see all these little kids crying like, yeah, like they, they're running around. The parents are yelling at the kids are running around. The parents are yelling at the kids are crying. And my little cousin, I, my cousin is now 13 at this point. This happened last year, so he was, you know, close to 13. He was 12. And we were trying to figure out what the hell we wanted to do. You know, what we wanted 
and we were kind of watching uh, in line. We were watching old like the best of SpongeBob, and there's one thing where Patrick came up, and now you have to create an appreciation for freeform jazz. And it's just you see Patrick with his like fist on his chin, just like concentrating, just Rah. and SpongeBob with the, with a fi- kind of like I don't know, it's like the finger gun on the chin, just thinking. And we were gonna do that, but uh, we got up to see fucking Santa. We sat down and. Santa was giving me crap for my Vikings hat. And so in the picture, you see my little cousin. He's doing the Patrick Freeform Jazz. Santa's giving me the tisk 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 looking at me. And I'm just like, what the hell? Oh, God. When I remember when my, when my aunt opened up that Christmas present. That was a great Christmas present. But then again, basically, where was I going off that? Yeah, the mall, like, mall's going in a hot topic. Yeah, I. it just, do, do you? Would you go in? I mean, would, would you want to go in now? They still have their. They still let their workers wear, you know, their band affiliated stuff. So you could see someone if they want, like, Mar- if they love Marilyn Manson, they'll wear Marilyn Manson stuff. If I was working there, you'd see me wearing a shit ton of different band T shirts. You'd see me wearing my Thirty Seconds to Mars stuff, all my Rise Against stuff, Avenged Sevenfold. I think I, I got one of my to- uh, Tool shirts, uh, Dead Kennedys. I even maybe wear the Prince one once in a while. I don't freaking know. But it's kind of cool to see. Uh, a store back from back from when I was a kid or back when I was a teenager that was always just a certain way evolve into something that is thriving and still has not lost its touch, but has evolved into something that is different again, but just hasn't lost its touch. And man, I should maybe go in there one day. Probably not though. Probably not. Just because I don't give a shit about going to the goddamn mall. Never want to go there. Uh, before we go, cause I think we're at, I don't know what touch time we're at. I know this one's not going to be that much of a longer one just because the fact of the matter was I want to talk about the ghost of Ohio with somebody and I couldn't really get anybody on here. So it's like, God damn it. So again, probably a little bit of a shorter one. I remember last week I did one that was, I did a couple that were kind of longer, but you know, what, what are you going to do about it? I'm just looking forward to seeing what comes up through the rest of through the next couple of days. Or next couple or next week, I should say, because I'm not necessarily sure I've got any new music I really want to check out. The next album I'm really getting going to get into and really take a deep dive look at after the Ghost of Ohio comes out in about a week and a half at this point. Little, yeah, a little over a week and a half. Uh, Unbreakable by New Year's Day. Yeah, we're taking a deep dive into that one. I talked about what I on two podcasts ago what I thought about uh, their Come for Me single. Uh, talked about it on our live stream a lot as well. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. The right now, like the I'll, I'll put it this way: we're gonna talk about albums just before we go. What are new music that's come out? The two new albums that or the two albums from 2019 that right now I'm just thinking about. I'm like. They did a really good job, and those are contenders for album of the year at that point, especially for the My Song of the Day, Rock Sales, and Today awards that come out, you know, every single end of the year. We started our first ones at the end of 2018, because that's when I started this shit. So, yeah, uh, the two ones that really stick out in my mind right now was the one I talked about with our buddy Jacob. It was the I Prevail album, Trauma, which I thought was rather good. But the one I think right now maybe has the edge on it came out right at the beginning of the year. Uh, Strength in Numbers by The Fever 333. That is a band that I must absolutely see in concert at one point because from what I've heard from people, they are freaking insane. Uh, Anything else coming up on the docket on my end that you guys might be interested in knowing about? Uh, Concert-wise, I mean, I kind of went over some of that stuff, but again... The day, the New Year's Day podcast after the, the when I talk about that one, that's gonna be a freaking long one because this it comes out on a Friday, the twenty sixth, the twenty seventh. I get to see Motionless and White and Atreyu, and that Sunday I get to see Rise Against do their whole entire Ghost Note Symphonies concert. So I'm pretty excited about that. Outside of that, um, this one might be a shorter one. So that's actually kind of all I got for you guys. Cause I didn't have a guest. I didn't, I mean, go to Ohio. I kind of went into a little bit. I'm trying to save some of it because I don't want to put out too much of it, especially if I've got a YouTube video coming out detailing the whole entire album. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Honestly, I'm, if you guys wanted more, well, I've got other stuff on there as well. So I'm going to end it at that saying thank you guys for watching. Well, not watching, listening to the My Song of Day Rock 2008 podcast on this chord progression. I'm so glad you guys stopped by and listen. Uh, if you want to follow our pages, 
Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Enable the Alexa skill. All that stuff's going to be in the show notes. Thank you for listening to the Core Progression Podcast. If you want to be on there, go to the mysongoftheday.com website. Go to the Core Progression Podcast part and fill out the form. An email will be sent to me, and I can get you on there. Or just send us a DM anywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just send us a message because, yeah, I want to have you guys on here, and I want to talk music. So... Hope to have you guys on here at one point in the time. So that's going to be it for me. This is Kevin from the Core Progression Podcast. I'm going to end this the way I end everything. See ya!